Now we're getting into loser's bracket round number nine. It's gonna be evil versus the shell. The winner of this series right here will play to, for the for qualification round number 10 versus locked. Tools, how are you feeling about this, this matchup right here? I think this is gonna be a true challenge for evil, right? They have the higher seed with the shell just taking down lines have a lot of momentum behind them and i have a feeling that this is not going to be anything easy for evil in fact i'd probably put them at at a disadvantage in this just basic uh just based off that last game that we saw but so far winning the start winning the hill getting everything to go right is, are they powerful enough to take down the shell and that's the question right when you get in you you, you know you play a team has played a, a best of five and now they're getting into a match with you is that little bit of a a, a flow you got to get into and it seems like evil have entered that little bit of a flow there is three down for them though leader nest the last player alive you see of course shell going to take control of the hill and all of these side they've got one player make that three players to deal with on this a side and rob not not really understand those spawns are going to happen it ends up going down and so often this game can be determined just by who has the better control of the uh, of the sandbox and so far this shell have been head and shoulders above right they lost the opening start for rockets but since then the way that they were able to break in is by getting the shotgun by getting the sentinel beam by by being on top of those weapons can truly be the difference maker rockets they come up what once every three minutes uh, you're gonna see the other weapons in rotation much more often it's important and i'd say imperative that your team's on top double of kill Great job by Rob the Turtle there to listen to communication, clean up both of those kills. That's going to allow them some more time on the board, but Leader Nest does make it through. Of course, we talked about it just now. The shotgun being an imperative part of the of this map in general. The Bulldog, such a powerful weapon here. Producing ammo, of course. Only four bullets for piles to work with, but finessing his way around this shroud screen. Look at him peeking through it, and he's not able to get the pressure that comes towards B, but he does get that hill ends up going down but that's going to be one hill in the favor of the shell yeah and evil i i really have to question that play at the end right they they leave their rotation early to try to stop that hill they weren't successful with that and because of that it gets a little bit more mixy in that hill than they'd like if they would have set up early they probably have a better chance of getting away with the rockets and then also having hill control at the very start instead not getting quite as much time as they would like and they're letting rob really stay forward on the map as he continues to take down players a little bit of a frustrating rotation from evil yeah rob playing very aggressive here and it's, it's seeming to work out for the shell they've now got a little bit of a setup oh my ah, goodness dakota <laughs> takes one to the front slash back from piles piles stays alive and now gonna be maintaining some hill control attempting to get this very second hill and the cross this is where that long range shot comes into play piles doing having a job there at the bottom of seat just put damage into the players on front a and Rob, if Rob can get the correct timing on this, he's going to have a devastating flank on two players. Dakota doesn't suspect a thing, but does get that damage down. And right, that's what's so important sometimes is at the adaptations that you see from players, right? He wasn't expecting the flank, but what he did do is he got as much damage down and he tries to Triple save it kill. for his team. And that's going to lead directly overkill. to an overkill. And well, maybe a kill tag if Leaderness can find the opponents in time. But that all stems from being on top of your P's and Q's, making Making sure that you're in the right place right time and when you're not uh, adaptating to what is needed of you leaderness with a sick overkill that is very well said halo infinite a timing based game nonetheless and you saw the timing there leader ness gonna get four it's gonna allow them to get some time on the board here but look at that as quickly as they get kills on the side of shell shell come back aggressive get three down momentarily dakota though doing a great job of playing his life delaying in time for his teammates to come through now oddly aggressive from the shell right there i didn't think that they needed to play so aggressively into this hill and now the hill basically secured for the side of evil and well, they're gonna be able to earn themselves these rockets as well unless a piles i think piles maybe sinks away with us yes he does so uh you know at the end of the day, I think Shell could have made, I think they they overestimated how little time that they had. I think they could have played a slower game right there, try to get those rockets and still fight for that hill. Nonetheless, though, it's, it doesn't come at a huge cost, right? Because even though they lose that fight, they do spawn at the back of PD and they have a very strong setup towards this hill. Yeah, that, that again, Rob the Turtle on that anchor side on PD, putting so much damage in. It's going to force Dakota back. 
for five seconds, but then he ends up going down as well. They do get some massive traits. Bid gonna be very aggressive there. Ends up getting two, also getting taken out. This is a big kill. They get him. They get Leader Ness inside of tires. And because of that, that's gonna be three dead for evil. And sometimes players just try to get a little bit, little bit too cute with it. They try to, to uh, over overcompensate on timings where they think they can get in right away, get this flank, but Piles punishes them right for it, right? You have to go a step at a time. That's the second time Piles has got away with some sort of smack like that. They got the first, they got that third hill rotation with no contestion at all. And, and so far, Evil doesn't look like they're gonna contest this fourth rotation at all either. Right? The shell is just starting to run away with this thing. Piles has got the melee game and running away is exactly what they're doing halfway through this third cap. And now you see Stan going for this C control. That's going to force spawns onto red and they have such a far distance to come through. Now they've got to fight through all the defense of PD and Rob the Turtle with his stalker and as well as C. Yeah, I was talking about the, the concept of, of expansion in Halo, right? You want to conquer as much land as possible, right? If you have control of the hill, there's no reason for your team to stay constricted. Expand out, block as many of the spawns as possible. And when you block more spawns, it means that there's less variables for you to deal with. You can understand where the next spawn is going to happen more effectively. And then when it's the worst possible spawn for the other team, it just makes the game so much easier. And now the shell, they have a great dilemma here. It's like, okay well we have a, a two hill advantage we don't necessarily have to get to this hill we can play slayer for the next three minutes or we can slowly pick apart get the spawns that we want and then play for hill right now the most important part of the map going to be in that back c area where you see evil set up right now whoever can break in there and have control of that spawn is going to come away with this hill but it's going to be a slow and methodical fight for evil it's going to come down to that one pick evil does get one under rob the turtle he's going to spawn up they get another one on the stand you talked about it how important that seaside is, especially with the stalker rifle piles trying to play his life. Down to no shields, gonna stay alive. He finesse his way through, gets back in the hill. That's not what you wanna do. They see that indicator, take him out. Two down for Shell. Piles and Stan go down. Now, Squilly, he's, he's going to be on this important flank, right? Because what he's doing right now is he's blocking this cafe spawn, but he's also that front line of defense for his team, right? Because what's important, right? It's that C spawn. You want to make sure that you know where everyone's coming from. Squilly does a great job of forcing PD and forcing the players to come through the middle, but then it's the second effort that's the most important right he had to be that player that stays forward stays alive and gets massive amounts of damage in he was able to get some damage but i think at the end of the day his life not as valuable as he like it and time just keeps ticking away the shell really have no reason to get into this hill they're just going to constantly bait this middle hill and if they can continue to get these kills it's slayer for the next two minutes and uh, so far it's been effective for them and that's the problem, right? Shell, you know, they're going down one, but they end up getting that trade, and the trade is all they need to, to, to prevent Evil from getting in this hill, but Evil needs a, a full round of slays here and withstand once again. That's the big factor here for me, is the Shell controlling all of the sandbox, controlling these power weapons, the rockets consistently in their hands. They're able to be effective with them as well. Finally, we see Squ Squilly with his bulldog. They... Don't have information on the spawns just yet. They find out Piles. Piles goes down. Bid stays alive on back C, so he's going to be a problem. And Squilly now to do the work on his own, and he does just that. Three down for Shell. Uh, the shock is so effective. And Squilly's he's able to get that damage down. The problem for Evil is that how how much time do you have to get back into this game, right? You need to start really convincingly, uh, convincingly win gunfights in this uh, situation. You cannot afford to go for trade for trade. You have to soak up every single second. You're gonna need all one minute left on this clock when you're gonna go into this next rotation at B. Yeah, Mappy's in a really great position though to potentially secure this hill. He has a stalker on the top C, ends up trying to relocate. And Nate does come through and hit him he gets the perfect though on the bid that's the opening two down for the shell they can potentially get this hill but they've got to fight that turtle who comes out puts massive damage in and 43 seconds remaining we're talking about two hills that they have to get within 43 seconds which is a difficult task to ask for 
Oh, look Double at Maffy. Kill. That's a huge flank right when his team needed it. He's going to be able to secure those kills, but look at the spawns from the shell. That red room spawn is going to give them immediate access, and even if they don't win these fights, it just keeps them off the hill for just a bit longer because the... The next spawners are going to be able to have access, but there's still plenty of time for Evil to make this comeback a reality. These rockets are going to be important. You can see right now, Piles and the crew try to play for it, but who else but the turret to get away with it? Rob's running away with the booms. He does go down to no shields, playing very smart, though. Doesn't, doesn't play aggressive. He knows these rockets are going to delay this time. You see 20 seconds at the bottom center of your screen and counting. Down to 15 seconds now. Evil have to make a play here. They've got to get this hill in time. Rob's going to get a suicide there, though. This is a big kill by Piles on the Squilly. He gets him down. Dakota stays alive, though. He's the last player. He used the Shroud screen with three seconds left. Can he live is the question? No, he does not. But they continue to stagger towards this hill. I mean, a heads up play is just not going to be enough, right, at the end of the day. I love the concept, though, right? You have to buy as much time for your team to get there as possible. You use that Shroud screen. It's going to give you enough time to at least stay alive and to keep that hill contested. And then you're hoping for the next best spawn. And, and that did happen to an extent. It's just the problem is, is you just run out of time, right? There's, there's just not enough time to facilitate that comeback. And it shows how important it is to go up 3-1 in this game. If you're up 3-1 on, on King of the Hill on streets, you might as well call it GG. Because when a team wants to make it hard to capture that middle hill, it feels impossible. And even though there was three minutes left on the clock, right? The shell could have played for the hill. They decide to play for the slays. And that three minutes of, uh, of Slayer just ends up working for them at the end of the day. Just running out of time uh, is for uh, is evil. And then, like you said, they play that Slayer for three minutes. That's a high risk, high reward situation there, but they capitalize on it, which is the greatest part to slay that long for three minutes. And then finally, you know, Evil is able to cap with 30 seconds left. That's a that's definitely not an easy feat. And they were able to utilize, you know, uh, that communication that we heard in that previous series. And like you said, momentum playing a big factor here, of course, you know, starting off, you know, and coming out of that game five and starting off this series with a, a win is is going to be huge for them. The question is, can they continue it and will Evil answer back? Yeah, right now I just feel like so much momentum on the side of the of Rob the Turtle and the rest of the shell. I feel like this is a series that is going to swing heavily in their favor, but this is the map that I think is going to be the most important, right? If you can answer back right away and take this game, then evil is suddenly they're back to even. You can ignore that first game and the trials and tribulations you had there and earn yourself uh, earn yourself a victory. I think this game is going to be more important. Than, uh, so often we talk about game three. I think this game two might be the most important in the series. Tough the leader necessary. He's got the camo. Going to spot out Rob the Turley. Gets one, but that trade going to come out so fast. But Squilly, beautiful job there. The timing, impeccable. Going to push the pipes. They get the shock and the camo. And now looking to make a play on the spawners. I have this camouflage, but still playing very aggressive and forward with this shock rifle. It almost reminds, uh, reminds you of how players would play in Halo 5 with the sniper rifle just because of how effective it is at that close range. But every risk has, uh, every you know, high risk play has a high reward. But you know, I think players too often forget the risk, right? Playing so aggressive right. with that sniper rifle, giving it up that early, it changes the fabric of this game early on. And uh, we're going to have to see how much of a run the shell are going to go after ripping that shock rifle away that's well said i mean you're, you're you talked about it I, I think like you know at that point they have that beginning game they, they get the trades necessary they have the camo and shock that's a time to slow it down and a lot of these teams not really able to to that's what they're pacing like that in game they have one pace and that's it we'll see if the pace changes here for evil though they are up by one make that a tie now 3v3 situation Matthew's gonna push on in rob the troll is gonna get taken out Matthew has top control on that glass side with spawns coming out on A. That's a very advantageous position. And look at Piles and Bid and their rotation right here. They they need to take down Dakota and, and give themselves a, a wing to transfer through. But Dakota playing so effectively with his life, it's going to allow his team to push forward. And, and now because he stayed alive, you're starting to see a potential collapse for evil. But 
Pyle shuts it down because he plays that passive role in the very back, but it just shows how important your life is in these games, staying alive and how much of an impact that can have on pushes and, and can earn yourself kills. So often, it's not necessarily about the slays that you get, but the slay that you don't get in these games. Shell had their first camo of the game. Evil had the camo and still Shell did have the lead. So if you think about that with Shell having this camo in hand, what damage are they going to be able to do in the shock rifle as well? Bid opts to pull out the BR. I like the heads up play right there. Pulling out the BR to make sure to put that team shot in so he can assist his teammates. And is able to continue to utilize this shock as well. The hold back players pushing on long haul side. This is a fragile moment for Evil. If this game goes any further in the side of the shell, you might as well kiss it goodbye. You have to stop this player in particular bid with that shock rifle. Uh, limiting him to only one kill is a great start. The problem is, is that the shell is going to constantly refill and keep that shock rifle in their hands. Evil needs to find a way to kill the shock rifle player, pull that thing away, and prevent them from getting any more momentum off of it. Nappy is on the side of the shock rifle spawn. It'll be spawning in about 40 seconds here, I believe, unless... It was not out of ammo, I'm unaware. So Nappy continuing to hold that top glass area. Finally, Evil does get a kill, but consistently the kills are traded out. A five kill lead for the shell, but Leader Ness playing an incredible role here on this flank. Is he gonna get two? Yes, he is. Can he get the third? No, he whiffs it. Rob the turtle gonna shell up and stay alive. Right, but you see how much everything changes because of those plays. And, and Leader is now with this shock rifle. This is the opportunity that Evil's been waiting for. And now things are starting to fall apart at the seams for the shell. Rob, I mean, hey, talk about giving, uh, giving a little to-go present right there. That might just <laughs> save your team so much heartache in this game because he, not only did he get an important trade, he also was able to take down the shock rifle player in an important moment when camouflage was coming up. Uh, that might just be a saving grace for the shell. Speaking of a saving grace, we're in a tie game right now. Shell were up by about five kills, I believe. The lead has been cut though, and now Evil takes their first lead of the game, 27 to 26. Dakota gonna push aggressively on these spawns. Bid get caught, gets caught out looking the other way. And because of that, Rob the Turtle's in trouble as well. He goes down, three down for the shell in such quick fashion. I love how aggressive they play once they get that first pick and everyone's communicating with each other. You start to see them strike when the iron's hot, able to find the collapse and now, uh, now paying patient on the on the follow-up as well they're not getting too ahead of themselves they have the lead for the first time it's about finding this first pick and then using the numbers advantage to facilitate the rest of your plays this really is putting out massive amounts of damage you see the blank there from dakota they're gonna pick up another kill now they have a lead of five that is evil doing an incredible job here of putting those cross map shots in so they can take space on to ace well he's gonna opt to stay top tower though it looks like a rotation coming through this long haul side and it must be due to that information coming from the whirlpool spoolie's gonna have to back off as well as leader nest they're both one shot aggression might come from shell here all right, school has been such a dynamic player even though he's playing so far back you see how much he's traversing going left and right trying to ensure that he's always having some sort of help for his team but that help, it could be too little just because of Rob having this shock rifle. Now the shell can really slow down and they're just waiting for Rob to get that first pick, open up a lane, get this camouflage and swing the game. You talked about it. You said the shell would control the shock rifle. Oh, Ooh, just hit. barely missing. Trying to get his head there. The head was not poking. He's out in the open now and now in trouble, but stays alive. With that camo coming up, that's a devastating live there for evil. Ought to rob the turtle here because of that to go down make that three for evil go down and now the shell control the camo once again and sometimes it's not about the kill that you get it's about the kill that you don't give and rob not letting that shock rifle fall down giving it to his camouflage player Perfect. now this is the opportunity that the shell has been waiting for able to push freely throughout this map and you're starting to see the numbers from evil start to fall because of it this is a fragile moment and it looks like the glass could be shattering around evil, but leaderness, the leader they needed in the in a pivotal moment in this game finds a massive kill. And now the shell suddenly, they find themselves constricted hiding in their hard shell, but it's their prey is here and they're trying to fight their way through. 
put on some great defense there to go down. Mappy trying to get a kill onto Rob, but Rob stays alive, gets his own kill. We thought Bid made a play that was going to trap Shell inside of A, but they end up prevailing. And because of that, they've shortened this lead, but still 39 to 36 evil in the driver's seat. And they've got some great space on the map on C and glass side. Let's see if they're able to make a push here. Now, Squilly was able to get through this cross. And it's because of his teammates' damage that Matthew was able to get across the map. It's allowing the crossing players to come through. And Piles just needs to give up on this A. He, he needs to leave before he goes down. And unfortunately, he his life is taken. And now, suddenly, the shell... I don't see a... I'm starting to see the past disappear, right? there. There's no... There's no clear path to victory anymore. Things are looking bleak as the rest of evil collapse. Camo goes into the hands of Dakota, and this game looking more and more likely to be Reds. We talked about it. We talked about the shell coming off that game five win, coming out with momentum. They carried that momentum into game number one, but now we're even kill here 48 to 37. Dakota pushing in for the last two, and he gets it. Evil going to tie the series one to one. Yeah, I'm in great place from Dakota through and through that entire series. 18 kills, nine deaths, double positive for your team, getting the big kills when you needed them. But I think everything really comes down to that kill that Leaderness got against the camouflage grapple, uh, the camouflage shock rifle player uh, towards the middle game that really allowed them to maintain their lead and then eventually expand it towards that end game there was plenty of opportunities for the shell to win that one they let him slip by and now evil so much momentum right after after having a pretty heartbreaking loss in game one where they just weren't quite able to get things going frustrating game they respond back with a with a great victory flag the swing game let's go at it here we go, game number three, just to give you guys a heads up and create the storyline for you. These teams are competing for four placement or four places in the 4K tournament, the HCS 4K. We've got two teams already qualified from this tournament. It's gonna be Mantra and Status Quo. And now on the lower bracket where we are right now, two teams will qualify. We've got Evil, of course, versus the Shell here. The winner of this will play locked in round number 10 for that qualification. So right now, this is do or die. Series tied up at one. Game three, Aquarius CTF. And the momentum on the side of evil and a very strong momentum tools. I mean, these guys came out from losing that game number one. They came out strong in game number two. It is a slayer, so we have to talk about that. We're of course, hopping into an, an objective here. And now on your screen is Dakota. As of our Dakota playing very passive off the start and you're seeing the shell they just take immediate advantage realizing evil weren't playing of all their numbers forward take advantage of those isolated gunfights get the opening kills and now bid all his job is right now is to keep these players preoccupied wait for your team to get in position get the important kills if they can get a two three down in this moment that's a flag capture so that was really good by evil there though they're able to minimize the damage the trades do come through but piles gonna end up trading as well that's three down for the shell the map resets and now evil pushing towards that 50 percent portion but we talked about the shocks one player gets melted away and bid trying to get some damage on some players that are pushing inside of blue but continues to stay alive he does this so well to us Hey, yeah, I love how he's immediately trying to find some time and getting behind these players. Although the flag is out, Bid can recover so much space for his team so quickly just because they don't know that he's back here. Really, just laying in the grass, a snake waiting to strike on his prey. And that's exactly what he does. He gets one, looking for the second on back flag here. Puts three shots in, not able to clean it up. The flicks don't matter. Matthew's going to get a big kill right there. Stays alive as well, and now putting pressure on the piles as he gets a couple of ticks to return on his flag. Remember, was that enough, right? You see piles, he has an idea. He wants to try to grab this flag in time, but he's gonna have to settle for trying to push into this base, and they're gonna have to try to pull out another flag. But look at this collapse. The shell is just relentless on their way through, but I, 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 
I'm so impressed with this Mappy guy. I, honestly, honestly, so impressed with how he's been playing. So many crucial 1v1 fights that he just has the edge in, constantly finding big kill after big kill. And really, he's responsible for two flags not going home uh, for the shell and keeping this an even game. Mappy starting out six and three, looking to add to that. He gets the seventh. Once again, look at him clean it up here. He gets that double bid. Whole big gets a huge kill there to stop that triple, but three down. The damage has been done. Evil gonna take some space on the map, but Pyle says no, comes in off the spawn. But take out that player on utility. Again, that is the game of Halo Infinite, you know, playing that slow roll, making sure that information is not given and squilly does just that but he ends up going down as well a back and forth brawl from these two teams you know, trying to get those shots down and stan's gonna be this player that that can keep leading the charge as bid plays from the back lane this is exactly the setup you want if you're the shell right keeping bid in the back putting down that damage while you let your teammates get situated they're, they're getting themselves set up to start a push and it's all gonna come down to one big kill and but who is it once again active who's the player that comes out yeah. and stops everything in his tracks yeah he's doing it time and time again these are those pivotal kills you need and you know i was gonna talk about big playing such a great role on top center staying alive for such a long period of time but Mappy closes that out gets top center control and now it looks like evil in the driver's seat here they get a kill onto piles as well. Bid's gonna go down too. Maffy just tearing everything apart here on top center, putting so much damage in. Once again, though, you see that tools. The shocks play such a big factor on that defense. Ammo coming up in five seconds. This fight is gonna be so vital. Maffy needs to stay alive. He's dodging nades. And this camouflage gonna make everything work for whichever team gets it. It looks like Bid's gonna be the victor. Now just one player between him and this flag. He needs to be the last line of defense. It's got the camo. This is the play he needs to make though. A nade does come in front of him. No one home. Happy. Happy gets a crucial beat down, but is anyone able to clean it up is the question. The nades come through. Bit is red barred. Anyone does anything to him, he's gonna go down. It's his job right here to stop this flag. He gets one. Not in a position to return, though. He's gotta get some more slays. So instead, the camel run will come through. They get the, that flag past a 50% portion. And once again, Bid makes a huge play, and we're in a stalemate. But look, Piles gets through. Gets a kill. He's got his teammate with him. That's Rob the Turtle. Can Turtle get the kills? No! And that's a lot of confidence that Bid put in his, his teammates there, and they were just half a second away from getting that flag returned, leaving them into that 2v2. And they did so much, but Dakota, so smart to, to close the distance, right? He wants to get inside that flag circle. And although Rob takes it all the way to the last moment, that flag stays alive, and it's going to allow a counterattack now for this evil roster to potentially get a flag home and the first flag on board. This game is separated by literally such a small margin. So many players making big plays. We talked about Maffy 14 and nine to start this game. Shocks do come through once again. Bid bit has been on top of those shocks pretty much this entire game. At least the shell has been. But some crucial kills come out. That's Dakota there, gets one, ends up going down. Double That's a double kill. for Rob. The return coming out from Stan. Can he get it in time? Squilly's going to contest. He does. And he gets the kill as well. That's going to be two down. Make that three. And a continuation cap. But he doesn't get it out the window. Yeah, top it. You can't jump while you're playing forward with that flag. If you jump, the flag's going to hit the top of the roof. It stays over on the ledge. A frustrating moment. But the shell still has an advantage to try to run through. Are they going to do so, though? The shell get one that previous side but they don't get the second stan does get two kills bid cleans up one as well that's three dead this is a very this is a very textbook flag pull here three dead the spawns come out on the fridge but now once again evil on their back foot having to get these slays while also pulling this flag piles is gonna go down once again that you know they ate the triple kill. kill from across the map 
continuing to put pressure in. The damage he's dealing! He gets the over! He wants it! It's not an over! It's a kill tack in my book! I don't care what the game says! That's two caps on the board for Shell! Yeah, it's so effective for Bid playing that flank, able to find those first three, and then the way that he plays the 1v2, it's perfect, understanding exactly what he needed to do. Played a, played a perfect micro game, and it allows a second fly to go through. The, those are the moments that, in games that change everything, not just in this flag, but potentially this series. We're continuing to stay on board with Bid here. Sees the spawns come out of the fridge, the push going towards P2, but oh, he gets crossed from leader Ness, who's also pulling a flag through. This one passes the 50% portion, and in his hands, a heat wave. His teammates on board, but look, Stan, he made it in the base. He's gonna get another pull out once again, and the shocks once again by the shell. Gonna put so much damage in. Once again, three down for evil. The flag out, the bottom center. Spoolie has to stay alive here, but Piles there to return. No one in position to stop him. And get the return, Piles, that is. And that should be, it should be another cap. There it is on the board. And the fourth one in Rob the Turtle's hands with the camo. This is incredible out of the shell. Yeah, I mean, Evil win the gunfights, right? They're able to get the flag away, but they didn't worry about the overextend, right? And that's where Shell take advantage. They realize no one in the overextension lane. They play through. They're able to get the flag out. That buys time. Then it's just smart play after smart play. The follow-up from the players from the Shell that make all the difference. And when it starts raining, oftentimes it starts to pour. You're starting to see score after score. Four to zero for Shell. Four consecutive caps here for shell and such a quick fashion bid putting some body disrespect down 21 and 9 having an incredible i i knew this player was talented back in halo 3 when i was able to was able to play with him for one tournament back at mcc in halo 3 and i knew he was talented then but to see him grow so much i mean his his timing is is impeccable and just his positioning on the map is so strong and now because of that, two down for Shell, but they continue to pull through as they know the slays are gonna follow. Yeah, that, I love this from Piles, right? He's getting damage in, he's gonna get info for his team and then Bid working in combination to clean up the damage that goes down, but you have to execute, right? And the execution just wasn't quite as clean as they'd like. It's gonna make this flag a little bit more mixy as you're starting to see T, uh, player after player tee up. Try to get to this thing, leader did not. Oh, there we go. They did get enough to get that flag through. So honestly, it comes down to that kill, right? If he drops down and gets that kill, I think that's the fifth and final flag that comes through. But with two minutes left on this clock, this feels like an impossible task for evil. They, they probably just need to set their sights on game four. Yeah, I mean, like you said, a minute and 45 seconds left. Not a lot of time here. They're able to regain on their base, though. There was only one spawner in the back of base. I was worried that the shell was going to push through with that with that knowledge. But three, make that four down once again. Piles, it's like that's it. There it is. 4-0, 4-0. In convincing fashion, by the way, shell. I mean, that was that was the fastest i've seen three caps go in a row ever like that was very quick and no answer evil had no answer for them yeah it's just just getting outplayed on every uh, on every lane that time and uh, a little bit concerning from evil right they were the hosts of the game they saw the flag get pulled while they were four down and just end the game right and uh you know i always saw there's a little bit of controversy between that ending a game early is it uh is it necessarily bad manners i don't believe so but there's definitely been times where where players are they want to finish out that game and uh evil they showing a little bit of their frustration right there i mean this is so sick from bid i mean can you really rewind this after that's so so sick from bid teaches uh that's uh what you call it the unofficial kill tag right there I, i'd count it in my book uh too but it all starts with the flank right making sure that he finds his way behind all these players he finds the triple kill at the top of this base and then i love the recognition knowing where the next spawn is and even if he doesn't get this kill it's fine he's done his job he kept them distracted but the way that he was able to work with piles to finish off that second one plays the 1v2 uh, just masterfully my favorite is this the curb slide beat down i mean that's just stylish right there bid performing incredibly well but can he continue that 
in this next game is the question. A 2-1 lead here for the Shell. A convincing game number three that we just saw. And you, you said it yourself. That was the decide. Like, that's that's a very big swing game number three. I mean, we're, we're going to see if, if Evil can regain here. And, of course, we're going to live fire oddball. All right, Sniper going to be so important to the action on this map. Who gets it? Who put, uh, who fries with it? Often kind of can, can determine the game just by itself. And you're going to see a lot more tower holds. You know, I feel like we saw uh, a lot of A, a lot of uh, a lot of C, a lot of B, right? There's a, there's a good mix on right. Oddball before. But now with the Shroud screen being up and how important it is to getting that overshield, you're going to see a lot more teams prioritize only holding this ball towards tower. You see it right now, Shell all situated on that tower side, but you see the rotation of the ball going towards A for Evil. Rob does have this sniper in hand. Just pay attention to how passive he plays with this. They're going to look for that initial pick here. You see Piles is pushing the big door. They're pushing very aggressively, very early. No one's there to help him out. Piles goes down very quickly. Bid does stay alive, though. And that shot is not going to get cleaned up. So once again, the snipe body shots are good. But if they're not able to capitalize on those kills, I mean, it's not going to matter at the end of the day. Yeah, Rob, living to fight another day. And that's what's important, right? Making sure that you're ready to be the tip of the spear when your team is ready to take action. And Rob being very aggressive with the sniper, getting damage down, not necessarily getting kills. But what he did do is he bought enough time for Bid to catch up. Right, and once they catch up, then the collapse can start coming through in a more effective way. As Rob's been playing his life, and his life's gonna come in the his life's gonna give him a couple more kills. Love these Double plays from Rob. Kill. Killing spree to start this game. Like spraying the ball in hand, doing it all. You see the spawns come out on I believe that is tower. It, it actually had splits on tower and B. So two players are going to be forward here on the map. Bid has to stay alive here. He's not able to, but they do get that trade. The Shroud screen is going to miss the OS platform, but they still do get OS. I believe that is Evil who did get it. Or is that Bid? No, it was Evil. Evil did get the overshield. It's going to be Dakota. He's got the job to try and do as much damage as he can, but unfortunately, no one is really here with him. So he's going to have to win a win. Uh, sorry, win a win 1v2. And he's not able to do that. Shell is able to turtle up like we talk about and stay alive here. Two down for Shell, though. But the important thing is the ball resets, right? And now, even though Evil didn't necessarily get the kills at the right pacing or, or whatever you ha uh, whatever uh, happened in that moment, because the ball reset, it really bails them out in that situation. Now able to get right on top of that ball. We're able to get that opening time, but sometimes your setup just isn't to be piles rips it apart the shell been so effective at that time and time again throughout this tournament find the break and now for the first time feels like they truly have a setup that they can hold see the first initial push coming out of dakota here rob gonna put some massive damage on him forces him to get off of nest bridge piles holding in on the big door while they uh, stay at uh, b but squilly with a snipe gets one pick that's gonna be two down for shell getting pressured here Stan's gonna get saved by the concrete, but all the while, Evil getting time on the board, approaching 50 seconds now in this round number one of Oddball Live Fire. And I mean, Squilly really starts all this. The sniper rifle being in the right spot, able to find that first pick, really just dissects the shell setup right away. And it has to be frustrating for the shell, right? Because they're doing the right things. It's just not necessarily translating into what they want. And talk about frustrating. That kill that Piles. Piles thought he was dead for sure. Basically gave up, tried to play his life. And then suddenly, a little bit of shakiness that he's just oh. not able to capitalize on it. Oh, no. I, it's oh, just no. frustration after frustration for the shell. Unfortunate there. Piles does get this overshield, though. Evil got that first one. Now Piles... We're going to utilize this one. The green gun does get shot, but it's going to barely miss. But wait a minute. He still gets it off. Piles, the OS completely null and void. And that's going to be a big factor here with the fact that Shell are down 32 to 55. I mean, that OS could have played a major factor in this recovery, but OS is gone. Yep, the overshot being ripped off, it, it, it's lost opportunity time for the Shell. They could have had probably another 10 seconds of ball time without any contestant. 
if that if that overshield stays on instead it's gonna have to be a quick ball rotate from rob they do an effective job at getting this ball away but still having to play a little bit more reactionary than i think they'd like to you see reactionary is exactly how they're playing here shell trying to stay alive on this tower side but from all angles being pushed by evil that ball gonna be held on the tower Bit is in a bad spot. He gets taken out. That's the isolated player. A push is coming out from bottom center as well. Squilly's going to end up staying alive. I believe they did get that kill. That's going to be two dead for Shell once again. You see, consistently two down. Staggered two dead over and over and over again. Shell have to just recollect and reset here. Right now, yeah, like one, maybe two more good pushes left from the Shell. And, and the question is, who's stepping up, right? Who's going to be the entry fragger and, and open up the lane for your team? And Piles was able to get that first kill, but they're just not fast enough, right? They're, they're not collapsing at the pace I think they're happy with right now. Piles! Oh. Uh, okay, <laughs> you'll, you'll take the one for one. You know, it, it's a little bit Better rough, than nothing. but you'll, yeah. you'll take the one for one. But I think the shell just having uh, some questionable executions through the end of this game. And this overshield needs to be a saving grace. That ball getting away. You have 15 seconds. It's time to go. Rob, you can't play slow and steady. You got to beat him to the finish line. Oh, they were waiting for it, too. They get him down quickly. And that's going to be this round. And Les Piles can make a massive play, but not going to be in time. There it is. Evil gonna take round number one in this live fire oddball game and honestly i mean like you said it just I, like uh, what i noticed was just the staggered pushes to go down then two push and two go down and then consistently just there you know evil was just able to isolate two players at a time and got all that ball time all the while yeah sometimes you just have awkward timings you're just not on the same page you're not playing at the same pace and when that happens it can have deadly effects throughout a game and you can see, uh, I think Evil just taking a huge momentum boost because of the, uh, some of those trials and tribulations that the Shell had in this first game. They're getting themselves a little bit of a confidence boost after playing the way that they did. And now with this overshield on, ball in hand, one, one team wipe right here, and Evil can really take a dominant hold. There it is. Dakota gets one. Mid the last player alive, but having a rough game uh, in, in and of himself. He's my boy, but definitely definitely struggling a little bit, at least to get kills here. No objective time as well. If he can pick it up, I definitely see some life on the side of Shell. We'll see if that comes to fruition. But as we speak, 28 seconds and counting for evil in this round number two. Uh, playing that forward position, but just not going to be able to do much with it. One thing I would like to see from Evil is getting this ball off the map, but I think that's out of the equation now. Bid plays his uh, position carefully, able to get that back smack. And I, I think a little bit of a misstep from Evil right there. They just need to recognize when their numbers go down and knowing yeah. that, hey, it's not worth the extra couple seconds of milk. We need to get this ball to a play position earlier and be just be more effective with our time, right? Sometimes it's, it's okay to give up the ball early and play for the next round of slays. Ball is down inside of mud. Finally, the shell have a little bit of a setup here. Great to repulse there by piles. That's going to get him a kill and also set him up to potentially get this overshield coming up in about 10 seconds. Piles gets another one on the tower side, doing a lot of damage here. He's able to also stay alive, but he does create space for the shell to get that overshield now. All down be, being down bottom center, but Pyle's aware of the player on top tower. If he gets this kill, this could be huge for the squad of Shell, and he does. Stan was there to clean it up just in case. But they're fighting for their lives here on A as the spawns come out. Evil on the push. And they allocated so many resources to getting that kill at tower, but their ball went the other way, right? They're, they're playing towards A, and now it feels as if maybe that one trade is going to come to bite them severely yep. as evil just were able to rip that ball away there was no numbers to really fight uh for the uh the shell and now this is where games start to get out of reach the way that evil have this set up at the moment the way that they're going to be able to keep the shell at a distance for just a bit longer it's going to give them a, a hell uh, of a lead to start this round two i talked about bid picking it up a bit 
That's the man on your screen right now. Now 917, starting to starting to get a little bit of a rhythm here. And this happens, you know, you play Halo Infinite. Sometimes you even said it like the timing could be off uh, for you as a player or you guys as a team. See if he's able to continue to pick it up here. But as I say that, Evil is continuing on this momentum and they still have a massive lead. Shell only able to put 18 seconds on the board for this round number two. Now, who gets down to bottom mid with that sniper, right? Eight bullets. Maffy has the ability to put this one away. And it's going to come down to some big shots and some big moments. With the overshield coming up in 15 seconds, ball off rotation. This is the perfect picking opportunity, right? You can play your position so well here. Use the overshield as bait. Try to find the right spot at the right time. Get the big kill for your team so that they can pull away. And I love the reposition by him, right? They do use the shroud screen here. And they do get the kills as well. All four dead for the shell. That's an overshield in the hands of Leader Ness. And now going for this tower control. You see the spawns come out onto the Ness side. And the big kills with the sniper from Maffy. Like you also said. He's looking for two players who are actually going behind him inside of A. But does he know it quick enough? No, he does not. He gets taken out. And that's the big puzzle piece, but all the while, 80 seconds and counting for evil on this round number two. I just didn't hear those footsteps, but I mean, Dakota Smart heads up play kill. from him is going to lead to kill. a triple kill. And probably this game, I just don't see any way that they're going to get here in time. He's going to try to force out a B spawn and those nades, they can land true. There's just nothing the shell can do. Wow, what a play from Dakota. Waiting, snake in the grass, realizing how to be in the right spot at the right time. A 2-0 victory in a much needed position for Evil to push us to a game five. And we saw some body disrespect there out of one player. I'm not gonna mention any names, but it came back to bite them. We got a tie series now. And now, of course, the game five. As casters, we love this game five. It's gonna be Empyrean though. This is a controversial one, and I, I got to hear your thoughts on this. I, to be honest with you, I mean, it, I love Empyrean. I'm an old head, you know. I, you know, been around for a long, long time. Um, but definitely, Slayer on Empyrean is is tough. I mean, you, you essentially you make one mistake, they get control of your top turret, you're spawn trapped for three cycles straight, and it's very difficult to get out of. Do you like it or do you hate it? I love watching it. <laughs> I, I agree. That's the only thing that matters for me is uh, yep. no, I, don't, I don't have to compete in these tournaments. I like watching the two <laughs> sniper maps. I like watching the 49-49 sniper showdowns. And that's yes, that's what I love. So for me, Empyrean, I, I think uh, sometimes it can be considered a necessary evil. You know, just having maps like that that, that can create exciting moments. They're, they might not be the greatest to play time and time again, but right. they can I create agree. some some hell of a moment, uh, Some some great games. I 100% agree. We've seen some in our day and they, they continue on here. But my question is for the shell is that, you know, you just lost two rounds in a row here. Is, is your momentum chalked? I mean, is there, is there something, you know, you ended up, uh, ended up losing that game too very convincingly, uh, that Slayer, and then came back and answered back very strongly with that 4-0. But I mean, is it the same here on this Slayer? I mean, if we're, if we're talking Slayer numbers, evil, has the leg up at the moment there i mean that first slayer obviously a very different map but 50 to 37 is a very convincing win for evil here can can evil ride the momentum and continue on for this game five and close it out it's gonna be a tough one last time we saw the shell on this map there they were so effective right on that flag game that we saw just a series ago and these players been around for a minute they know how to get the job done when it comes to the pit right I think that's where you might see some experience, some moments where just knowing the right play from repetition might be a difference maker. It's it's truly an X factor that needs to be talked about when we're talking about the pit. Repetition is such an important factor in improving. The Halo, Halo as a game is very situational. There's millions and millions of situations, and the more you get in them, the more you know the right play to make. Like you said, Shell was uh, Shell was able to showcase that the last time we, we ended up witnessing them on this map. So we see a little bit of that here. Uh, it could be very ugly. We could be, we could see a completely different story, but Evil have the momentum going into this game number five, the second game number five in a row. I mean, I don't want to say I'm a lucky as a caster, but I mean, that's two games. That's two best of five series, you know, that, that we've casted together tools. I think uh, 
you know we might have a little you know maybe it's just good luck who knows but let's put on a show is what i want to see that last best of five unfortunately you know it ended in a little bit of a blowout i'd love to see a very close game here rob the turtle with the os in hand playing aggressively he's got four players in front of him gets one wants to get the second not gonna get it that's gonna be a trade I love that from Rob though, recognizing that no one pushed his legs. He's like, hey, if you're not gonna push me, man, I'm gonna push you. Gets into their spawn, able to at least contest the sniper, making it harder for evil to get away. The problem is it came at a cost, right? And that was the cost of getting these rockets away. Comes for a free two kills, but the response strong, able to get themselves back into a power position. This is everything you could want for uh, for the shell off rip. Yeah, I mean, that was a that was a very quick response too. coming off that spawn on courtyard. They all push in. So that was four players of the shell inside a sword. Unfortunately, the only ones left are going to be bit and stand, but heavy on this sword side continuously. You see them back up now as they have the site control. And it looks like they will slow down the pace of the game as they get another kill on a Maffi and Dakota's going to share the same fate. They're not going to push that, though, uh, Garrett. They're not going to push that aggression and try to try to go for that spawn trap on the tower. They're just going to play passively on their side. Yeah, and then the show made themselves vulnerable for a moment, right? Chose a tactical retreat, and if Evil would have recognized that, they could have potentially swung this game heavily in their favor, but the risk works out, right? It keeps Stan alive, it keeps the sniper in the back, and it, and it allows them to play for the pick that, they, uh, that they've been waiting for on an even game. One pick with a sniper can absolutely open up the floodgates and change this game. The man on your screen right here has the tool in his hands to make that first pick happen. Squilly's going to get one, though. You're seeing the aggression here. And that trade, that's going to be huge. But they get another trade on the side of the shell. So a 2v2 situation. Stan's going to get a snipe on the sword of the sword player, who is leader Ness. And now using the beautiful skill gap in the AR to get another kill as well. They've got full control of sword and now looking to potentially get this OS as well when it comes up in 10 seconds. And a snipe off the spawn! Stan popping off. Spree. Yeah, Rob really... Rob's the important player right there. Yeah, Stan hits the big shot, but Rob blocked the most common spawn. He's basically feeding them to Stan, and Stan executes at the biggest moment. Now, right here, this is the one thing I don't like. I would be juggling that repulse alongside your overshield. There's no pressure at all. If you pop the overshield right here, and you have that extra little bit of shield that could be the difference maker but evil this is where things get shaky this is where things can get out of hand allowing the shell roster just to continually play forward and this assault rifle put in way more damage than i think uh, any assault rifle has put in in a single life yeah I, I am just baffled that he's carrying a sniper and an assault rifle and it's working they get the wipe there spawns will come out of the courtyard so they've got to be careful of that but stan using every tool in the toolbox at his disposal stays alive as well see the spawns do come out dakota trying to stay alive and get his first kill unfortunately he does not and now Pyle's gonna take control of the sword with his snipe 24 to 15 the shell doing exactly what you talked about being very veteran on this map and showcasing it here i feel like the shell are doing like a youtube challenge right now just deciding how to get the most views on a video <laughs> saying i'm not going to use a battle rifle this entire game every time i feel like we move on to someone they're picking up something else been using the, the sandbox so effectively and the second that someone decides to push a little bit too far you have to imagine bid's gonna have a sniper waiting for them and that, that's a problem for evil they have to make a decisive movement right they have to decide how are we going to do this and they need to do it all together all at once and that's always going to be tough to coordinate especially uh when you when you're in these tough situations these hype game fives where where you know one mistake can cost you bit of top of turret here of course we've seen the pacing slow down drastically it doesn't have to really do anything like you said the shell doesn't really have to do anything they can they can turtle up there and tell squilly knocks off the head of bid opens up the map but they find the angle squilly over aggresses a little bit too much ends up going down here and because of that some kills will come out on the board that's two down for the shell but it's still a massive lead 27 to 18 and bid gets the sniper rifle once again they just felt the tension building and building and building and then suddenly just one one life can change everything one opening 
allows everyone to play through. Overshield's gonna go for the shell, but the Rockets went the other way. And we'll have to see which one's more valuable in this situation. Double Rob's Overshield kill. already gone. Stan with one with those Rockets. And that means, well, how did Stan get away with those Rockets? I, I thought for sure that Evil had gotten them. Snipe. And now this is, ah, oh, this might just be GG's in the chat. Well, how do you get out of this if you're Evil? That's the hard part, right? We talked about it before, one mistake and you end up in a situation like this. Rob the turtle taking off heads, but three go down for the shell here. A 10 kill lead, make that nine for the shell still. But evil starting to chip away at it just a bit. Can they get the sniper control? The snipe coming up in about 10 seconds. This next sniper for both squads is going to be a deciding factor. <laughs> just, it, it doesn't really matter the grand scheme of things, but I, was, I had to go back and look how Rob got that kill with the sniper. He, he shot a grenade off his uh, off his teammate's body that just died to wow. blow it up and to get the kill. Wow. <laughs> it's just insane to see, but uh, I don't think that kill is gonna necessarily gonna be so important in this game, but I always love to see the uh, the Halo Infinite uh, sandbox come into play. Yeah, you, you say that, but we could see a one kill game here where that did matter. And I love that as well. I don't utilize that enough at all. Shooting the knees on the floor. 26, make that 27 now to 34. Two down for the shell. Is this the opportunity for Evil to play aggressive here? You saw the shell when they got kills. They didn't necessarily push aggressively on the side of Evil, but Evil looks to be changing things up and they are pushing massively aggressive, but there's still a guy on the top turret. The leader net's gonna hit the second one. It's the first one, but a four kill game now. We were just at a 10 kill deficit for the side of evil and now only three kills for evil to tie this up shell on their back foot yeah, things can change on a dime when you're playing this map there's just so much uh power weapon utility that can go around unfortunately you have to be able to follow up right it's not necessarily always about that that first initial grab and getting map control it, it comes off the next spawn right how you control the map when you get it and not letting a player get through and stand with that double kill now getting the sniper in his hands that might just be enough for them to really put away this game uh because of the clutch moments that he's provided for his team time and time again stan gets another headshot bid has the overshield pushing in aggressively stan's gonna get their side sword evil's on their back foot now but it's all about this os the os goes down to zero that's it two down for the shell, you hear the reversal metal. That's gonna be huge. Stan's gonna go down as well. He does rob the last player on this side of the map and look how slow he's playing. They don't know he's here. Oh, this is, oh Rob. <laughs> Just Rob is uh, giving them a little bit of a false sense of security, but uh, sometimes it's what you can do as a snake in the grass. The stick he comes through it. That's so crazy that that's the play that was successful. I was like, oh, he's going to come up behind these players, get a double kill. No, it's the stick that he threw on his way to challenge the other two that comes to fruition. That's two kills now that Rob has gotten that could really showcase at the end of this game to be huge. Every kill matters, of course. 42. On the side of Shell here, 37 for Evil. They've lessened the deficit, but the game has come back to a standstill. 10 seconds, deja vu once again. Sniper's coming up. Avi's playing a dangerous game right here. Trying to get forward into the sword, but the second he steps too far forward, his head's gonna be taken off by a sniper knowing that he's in this position it's gonna be rob who's been so important this game 13 and 9 and he's been he's been effective on the flanks but now it's up to him with the long gun the sniper the one shot kill to change this game we'll see if that happens here squilly we saw what he was able to do the last time he had the sniper in hand it's essentially a 1v1 squilly versus rob the turtle angles are what matter in this position, 24 seconds on the overshield and the rockets. Two minutes. Well, Evil has to make the play, right? They're they're the players that are behind in this game, and you're going to see them have to be the first ones to push through. And Dakota gets in, and now that's going to allow the teammates on the other side to push forward. They need to get to his help before he uh. dies, and unfortunately, that's just not going to happen. It slows this game down once again, and all that really changes is that you pushed Evil two more kills closer to 50 
Overshield's gonna go into the hands of evil, but it comes at the cost of rockets in the hands of Shell. And well, rockets they, they often equate to free kills, right? And that that for Shell is enough. At 44 to 39, you take the rockets every time. A big factor too is that repulsor. I don't see the repulsor in anyone's inventory here. So that repulsor is also a big factor in, of course, that green gun. It's gonna get a kill. Brings the lead to six. A minute and 25, you talked about it earlier. Evil does not have a lot of time to act here. They do get one kill. Squally! Again! A big kill, but he's gonna go down. Unless he can stay alive, he does. He has Sniper in his hand. Stan's gonna push him aggressively. That's all he needs to do. 49 to 41, two kills left. For the shell, big dad one. They're looking to clean it up. Rob with a snipe in hand, looking for his last opponent here. Can he find him? That's tough, Squilly. I mean, he got the job done, ripping the face. The problem is his teammates just weren't able to finish anything else up. And with 48 seconds left on the clock, you can't afford to play still. You have to play into the shell. But that all works against you just because of how the score line is. Only one death away from this game five slipping away. And uh, you never envy anyone in this position. But the time it's taking, you need two wipes. I mean, two and a half wipes, really. You, you don't have the time to be playing slow. 49 to 42. There's that last kill. It's in the hands of Piles, and he gets it. There it is. The trade is all they need. Shell will move on to play locked now to qualify for the 4K HCS tournament. I mean, that's honestly phenomenal from the shell in that game. Five big moments. Uh, and I, I really want to give a shout out to Stan Paradigm in particular. It felt like he was a, a great entry fragger whenever they needed him the most. So constantly finding that first opening pick to allow his team to play forward. And then Rob being that exact opposite player where he was constantly being that player that, that crawls in the grass, right? Slow and steady. But once he got in to that back base, just would sit there, hibernate and wait and wait and wait. And then he'd eventually find that opening pick, get them one step closer. They just played a better game through and through in the shell now in a qualifying round. Qualifying round. Like we talked about before, status quo and mantra on the winner's side have already qualified and we're looking for the last two qualifiers on the loser's bracket side. Round 10 is the qualifying round, like Tools had just mentioned. It will be next here. And, uh, of course, Shell looking really solid. That was a game five, and I, I believe their previous one was a game five as well, if I, don't, if I remember correctly. So clutching out two big wins here. Maybe they can carry that momentum against Locked. I, I'm very excited to see. It's going to be on board. Tony, two-turn, to zero, and Arctic. A very solid squad and definitely a test for this shell roster. I'm really excited to see how Jazeera plays. Uh, you know, obviously having a, a rough stint, getting uh, getting released from that complexity roster. Now having a chance with this team, but it all comes up to this moment, right? A qualifying round. But before we get to that qualifying round, we have the most important time of the stream. Oh, what is that? that time is it's no, ad is it? time folks it's ad time that's right get down get the popcorn ready get ready to watch your ads because that's the cool, ads baby. help us at lvt if you want to help support us well watch the ads if you don't want to watch ads well there's a simple solution for you you can check down over on the bottom right of your screen it says subscribe there you can click on that maybe just maybe you have a prime subscription available those prime subs cost you absolutely nothing in fact if you don't if you have a prime sub available and you don't use it you're basically giving bezos money that's just money you're leaving on the table so you right. might as well use it here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 